Star Citizen is chocked full of incredibly well-designed and generally cool-looking spaceships, and I would argue it has some of the best-looking ships in the entire gaming industry. Full stop. But even the best designers can make some mistakes, and it surely was bound to happen in the more than 100 release ships that we have today, which is the focus of today's video. That's right, instead of looking at Star Citizen's very best offerings, we're going to be taking a look at a handful of ships I personally see as the least successful executions of an otherwise interesting idea, sparked by their latest missed mark, the Scorpius Antares. Yeah, spoiler, that one's on the list. Now of course I need to add this at the beginning that this is only my opinion, and to be fair all the ships I'll be taking you through aren't necessarily bad, so if you love them there's nothing wrong with them, it's just that I personally think that they are the worst of all the ships that we have available in Star Citizen. So the objective here isn't to bring anybody down, but to poke a little fun at the people who make these amazing ships that we enjoy and hopefully also provide some constructive feedback so that they can improve these ships in future iterations. And if by the end you think I did a good job and I deserve it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified the next time I post a video. So there are quite a few ships in Star Citizen that can be considered a bit lackluster, whether it be for missing features or for how gameplay has been shaped around that ship since its release to make it less optimal, there certainly are a lot of ships that could see some improvement. I'm sure many of you will point out a few, like the Mole for example, which doesn't really have good multi-crew gameplay around it to make the second and third laser really that useful over just having three prospectors, or for example the Herald whose only function is data running and that's not even in the game yet. The reason why they and ships like them though aren't on this list is because they're just suboptimal or their function isn't yet clear. There's nothing really head scratching about them, at least to me. No no no. The ships I'm about to talk about here are the kind that make you think that they were born from ideas desperately sketched on a napkin by a designer on the toilet at 3am from drinking too many Red Bulls in order to meet a ship proposal deadline. Number 4 on my list is the Cyclone MT, and it's here not because it's not good, on the contrary, it's actually a really nice little infantry fighting vehicle, I've got one myself. The problem is that for some reason CIG thought that they needed to make this when they already had the Cyclone TR and the Cyclone AA, both based on the same exact chassis. What the Cyclone MT does is combine both of those two vehicles main attributes, having missiles and a single size one gun, into one much more viable vehicle where it actually mounts the missiles instead on a turret and not fixed to the chassis facing in one direction like on the AA. So this ship, this vehicle is effectively better than both the AA and the TR and there's no reason for you to buy either of those anymore which is why a lot of people who own them already were pretty upset. And that's why this is such a head scratcher. Sure, the AA has an EMP, but it's not terribly effective, especially given the range of EMPs and how they work right now in Star Citizen. The only way I see them fixing this is by making the TR and AA variants just a bit better. Maybe give the AA variants some size 5 torpedoes, and, and maybe give the TR a size 2 instead of size 1. That way at least they're interesting options. But this vehicle really isn't that big of a problem, especially when you compare it to the next one on my list. The Cutlass Steel. Now it's based on a very beloved lineup of ships, joining the Cutlass Red, Cutlass Black, and Cutlass Blue, all very good ships. The problem with the Cutlass Steel is that it's designed to be a dropship, which is supposed to loiter and be present on the front line where it's exposed to direct fire. This is actually shown directly in the advertisement material for the ship. And while CIG did elect to give it a lot more firepower by adding some door guns and an extra turret, unfortunately they didn't give it any more survivability than the base variant, which only has a single size 2 shield generator and just tissue paper for armor. So what happens when the shields go down is it instantly dies. A better name for this variant probably would have been the Cutlass Cough. And all this wouldn't have been so bad if it wasn't so darn expensive. It's 260 bucks on the website, making it around 30 bucks more expensive than the Warden Hoplite, which is a far better ship for frontline work given that it has a lot better shields and armor and has a lot more firepower for the pilot. Fixes for this should include giving it a second shield generator and dropping that price. It's not worth 260 bucks for what you get, it's a cheap Drake ship and that's exactly how it should be reflected on the website. But at least the steel is salvageable, unlike the next ship on my list coming in at number 2, the Rock DS, a bigger variant of the base ROC Grey Cat mining vehicle. Now if you don't know the base variant was much loved, it's a great stepping stone between hand mining and getting a prospector which is a lot more expensive, it gives you a way to make some money as a new player, but this Rock DS 
is a whole nother story. While the concept of having two people in a mining vehicle is a cool one, the way they executed it for the DS is a little bit ridiculous. Instead of giving a second seat inside the vehicle for perhaps mining on a second laser or maybe using a scout drone, they just stuck one on the arm. And then they split the functionality that we had in the ROC between two different seats the driver, and now the laser operator. Now what you're supposed to get with this is a slightly bigger laser, more storage, and an extra set of wheels. But unfortunately, it's not actually twice as good as the base variant. And because it's bigger, it doesn't fit in most vehicles anymore. And that's not even what's so fundamentally flawed about this thing. The cabin of the base variant afforded some protection for the driver, but with this new arm seat, there's no protection whatsoever. So now they're left to overheat or freeze to death if they're not wearing the right gear. And worse yet, the one that's inside the vehicle has a lot longer oxygen supply than the one in the arm. There's no oxygen supply going to that seat. So they're gonna suffocate if you don't go back to a ship sooner or later. It all just came off as very silly, and unfortunately there's not much they can do to salvage this thing. Maybe make it three times better than a base rock so it's just better than taking two rocks out on their own, and maybe you'll have something somebody might want to use. But sadly, it's just probably one of the worst chips in Star Citizen for me. And I had hoped it was going to be the last one we would ever see. But I was wrong, because they introduced the Antares in 318. Now the reason why it's number one on my list isn't because it's worse than the DS. The DS is obviously fundamentally flawed. This thing can be fixed. The problem is that they've had the learning experiences of the earlier mentioned ships, which weren't received well by the community for various reasons. This thing seems to combine all the problems of the previous ships into one package. Let me explain. So it's based off of the RSI Scorpius, which is a very competent ship. It's actually one of the meta ships right now, close behind the Hurricane for two seaters. Thanks to it being quick, tanky, and having a lot of firepower, it's got four size threes for the pilot and four size threes for the co-pilot who manages a turret. That makes it very scary to come up against in any other ship. For the Antares, they removed that turret and replaced it with an EMP device and a QED device, which is a quantum entanglement device which restricts anybody in the vicinity from being able to jump away within a given range. And this is where the problems begin. Like the Cyclone MT, they combine the functionality of two different vehicles into one, effectively making the existing vehicles feel a bit obsolete. Originally, you could only get a QED device on either a Cutlass Blue or a Mantis, and an EMP on the Saber Raven, the Hawk, the Sentinel, or perhaps even the Avenger Warlock. And if that wasn't already bad enough, the Antares is already better than any of them, given that it's tankier and faster than a lot of ships in the game. Now, CIG seemed to be aware of the fact that this was going to upset the balance and make some ships feel obsolete, and so what they elected to do was split the functionality like with the Rock DS between two different seats. Now, instead of the pilot being able to control the QED or EMP, only the co-pilot could control that functionality. And this might have worked this time if they'd not made the same exact mistakes as they had made with the Rock DS, which is that they just split the functionality between two seats without any thought for what that second occupant's experience would be. At least with the Rock DS's mining laser position, the mining mechanic was pretty interesting and could keep the laser operator interested. But this co-pilot position on the Antares only allows you to press two buttons and that's it. No, really, that's all you can do. Because unfortunately for some reason, and this is what disappoints me most, is that the designer didn't take the time to think critically about what they needed to change with the Antares to make it better suited for its designed purpose. Remember that the original Scorpius' co-pilot seat didn't really need a good field of vision or extra MFD displays because they were always going to be in that gunner position view, which was pretty good, so they only needed to focus on that UI. With this new Antares co-pilot position, that stuff doesn't exist anymore, so what you're stuck with is a very poor field of vision with only a single MFD display and no UI elements to support the function of the ship. That's right, there's no UI element to tell you the status or functionality of either the QED or the EMP, which leaves you needing to go into third person to decide whether or not it's time to release it or to even see if it's activated. 
Worse yet, you have no radar or target status to inform you whether or not it's time for you to release the EMP or the QED. You can't tell the distance or direction people are coming from to help the pilot understand where the enemies are so you could give them more situational awareness. You can't even manipulate the ship's systems to help manage power. And no, you can't operate missile operator mode. That doesn't even work. Not even that. What this effectively means is that you are stuck staring at the back of another seat with an MFD display that shows you no useful information and are completely reliant on the pilot telling you when to release the EMP or QED because you have basically no situational awareness for what's going on. This understandably leaves occupants feeling frustrated and out of the loop, like they're just extra dead weight relying on somebody else to provide any value, and that's not a fun place to be, and it's certainly not somewhere I would want a new friend playing Star Citizen to sit, because I feel like they wouldn't want to play anymore if that's the experience they were introduced to. This is what frustrates me so much about this ship, about this missed opportunity to make the co-pilot position something interesting. As it stands, the Antares is a perfectly good ship in its given role. It can interdict and hold people in position and threaten them. It's not a great PvP ship, it's not going to win one-on-one -on -one battles, but it is going to provide a lot of good support. It's fast, it's nimble, it's very tanky, it's going to be good at its role, but the thing is that it's not going to be fun to fly because you're going to need a co-pilot to sit in the back, and if they're aware of what they need to do, they're probably not going to want to sit back there, because it's just super boring. What they need to do to fix this is pretty obvious, but I also think that they're going to have to buff the other ships that only have EMPs and QEDs, because you can't just add a ship like this and leave other ships whose only purpose is the function you added into one feel like they're just obsolete. That doesn't make anybody happy who already owns those ships, and that includes me. I own some of those ships. And I also want to point out one other thing. If you didn't notice already, all of the ships I talked about in here are variants of a base version that was introduced pretty successfully. None of these ships were introduced on their own as a first generation of that ship hull, which means that CNG tends to fail when they make iterations, when they make alternate versions of an existing ship. And some of you might just dismiss these ships as lazy cash grabs. I don't want to be so cynical with this. I think that CIG can do better and have shown they can make good variants with like the Cutlass Blue and Red. What I think it is is that CIG need to follow through more with their executions and think more critically towards the latter half of maybe the white or gray box stage of whether or not the new variant design is actually going to be fun to use for the new roles that they're introducing. And don't be afraid to talk to the QA team and ask them what they think about the role that you're trying to introduce and whether or not they think it's going to be fun and really ask them to sit down and think it through, play it out in your mind, or maybe even do a mock-up to see how things play out. But what do you guys think? Do you think my list is incomplete? If so, what ships would you add or what ships would you take off? Did you agree with my points or did you disagree? Whatever you might think, I want to know what your thoughts are down below. And if you like the video, you know what to do. And one more thing, if you guys have a TikTok account, I just started one, and if you follow me in the next month, you'll have a chance to win a cutter plus a game package. So if you guys are interested in that, head on over and follow me. If not, no worries, I know TikTok isn't for everyone. See you in the next one.